Make Bar Graphs Lesson 10.4. If you haven't seen video 10.3, where we learn how to read bar graphs, I think you should watch that one first, and there's a link in this description, so you can just click on it. We can make a bar graph to help us compare information. We need a title that tells everyone what the bar graph is about. We need bar labels that tell the name for each bar. We need a scale that shows how many are counted. And we need a scale label that tells what we are counting. We learned that in the last video. So to review, Favorite Pet is the title of this bar graph. The bar labels are Dog, Cat, Hamster. And here's the scale. It goes from, whoops, we need a zero here. It goes from zero to six, and the scale label is the number of people. We can look at the bar graph and see that two people like hamsters, three people like cats, and five people answered dog. We can make a bar graph from the information. It will need a title and labels. So let's look at the information. Tala asked her family if they like brownies, cake, or pie as a favorite dessert. So from this information they gave us, do you know what we can call this bar graph? She's trying to find out their favorite dessert. So we can title it favorite dessert. And we need our bar labels. Can you see what choices they have? There's brownies, cake, or pie. That will be our bars. We have brownies, cake, and we have pie. Those are our choices. That's our family's choices. And this is what they said. Her father said he likes pie, so let's mark that off that we are doing the father. So we're going to fill in this box for pie for her father. We can fill it in as well as we can here. It won't be perfect, but it will be filled in, okay? The mother said she likes cake. So let's put a little mark here that we're answering the mother, and that's one vote for cake. So we can fill this one in, okay. Her brother likes brownies. So let's do one vote for brownies for the brother. We can color this all in. Her sister likes pie. So that's another vote for pie. And her grandfather and grandmother both like brownies. So we have two votes for brownies. Okay, so we're doing these. And we're going to put two for brownies. So here's brownies. We're going to fill in two squares. One for the grandfather and one for the grandmother. We color in one box for each answer. See? And the bar graph helps us see which dessert is liked the most and which is liked the least. So we can see that her family likes brownies the most. That's the bar that's sticking out the most. See? Now take a look at this. Here's some little fishies in a pond. We have blue and yellow fish in a pond. And the name of the bar graph is Fish in the Pond. This is the number of fish for our scale label and yellow or blue. And then we're going to fill the bars going up vertically, aren't we? It wants to know, are there more yellow fish or blue fish in the pond? So let's count them. How many yellow fish do we see? One, two, three, four, five. So we can fill the bar graph up to five right here for the yellow fish. Here's yellow. So we can make it go all the way up to five. 
and we can color all of this in so it's gonna be a lot of coloring and it's not gonna be perfect because I have a marker when you're doing this with a crayon you can do a better job but you can still sort of see what I'm trying to do here right that I colored this in okay now we need to count how many blue there are let's count the blue one two three four five six so we're going to fill the blue in up to the six that's the mark for six so that's as high as it's going to go and then the rest gets colored in right not that pretty but you know what i'm trying to do right I'm sure you could do a better job with crayons, all right? So we can see on our bar graph that there's more blue. So are there more yellow or blue in the pond? There are more blue fish in the pond. So we can write blue fish. There are more blue fish in the pond. And our bar graph helped us see that. It's comparing the yellow fish to the blue fish. See? Let's try another one. We can draw conclusions. That means figure things out from bar graph information. We can make a title. So here's our empty bar graph, and it needs a title. And our bar labels are baseball, basketball, and football. And it says for our scale, it goes up to eight, and the scale label is number of friends. We can read the information that is given and fill out the bar graph and give it a title. It says, Emma asked eight friends about their favorite sport. Tim and Beth like baseball, Dave likes football, Bob, Jason, and Maria like basketball, and Tala and Eric like baseball. So. What we need to do is fill in our bar graph with the information. So we know she asked eight friends. That's why it goes up to eight in case they all like baseball. Or what if they all like basketball? She needs room to answer that, doesn't she? Just in case. It says Tim and Beth like baseball. So that's one box, two boxes that we need to fill for baseball. Okay? One, two, for baseball, okay? All right. So, we did Tim and Beth. Now it says Dave likes football. So, we need to give one filled-in square box for football. Here's football. Let's do one filled-in box for football. We can use orange. All right, so we've got Dave. Now it says Bob, Jason, and Maria like basketball. Well, that's one, two, three people like basketball. So we can fill in three for basketball. One, two, three. And I'm not gonna do it perfect because I don't want to take too long on the video, but that's three for basketball. So we answered that one, didn't we? Then it says Tala and Eric like baseball. So we have one, two, more people that like baseball. So we need to fill in two more squares for baseball. So we go back to baseball and we fill in two more. One, two. Okay, that's pretty good, right? Kind of messy, but you know what I'm trying to do. So we did the Tala and Eric like baseball. It says circle the sport her friends chose the most. And we can just look at the bar graph and tell which sport they chose the most. It's the one whose bar is sticking out the longest. It's the baseball, isn't it? And we still need to make a title for our graph. Can you think of a good title for this graph? 
What was it looking for? It, what is it talking about? It's about their favorite sport. So that would be a good title, favorite sport. See? Okay, we got another one. It says, use the information to make a graph and write a title. So this one, the scale goes from zero to six. It still needs a title. It says number of friends and it says yes, no. Here's the information. Chris asked his friends if they know how to swim. Tim, Bill, and Emma said yes. Monica and Rick said no. So that's one, two, three people said yes. So we can make a bar that goes up to three for the yes, couldn't we? We can fill in these three boxes, okay? These are the yes ones, okay? Kind of messy, but it's okay, all right? And Monica and Rick said no. That's one, two people that said no. So we can fill in two boxes for the no, all right? Okay, I'm going to fill in two. All right, so there. Now what can we call this? He asked his friends if they know how to swim. What could we call this bar graph? We could call it friends and swimming. We could just call it swimming. We could think of lots of names to call this bar graph, lots of titles. We'll just call it friends swimming. How about that? Oops, sorry. Or friends swim because I'm running out of room. So there we go. Any title that would describe what this is talking about, okay? So, how picture graphs and bar graphs are alike? Well, picture graphs and bar graphs can go across horizontal, like this one did here, it's coming across, and they can go vertical, up and down, like this. Picture graphs and bar graphs can do that. They can show the same information, and they both have titles. How are they different? Well, picture graphs have pictures and symbols to count how many. And they have a key to tell us what each picture stands for. And bar graphs use bars to show how many. They don't use pictures or symbols. And they have a scale and labels instead of a key. Okay? So, our next lesson is going to be about tally charts and tally marks. We're going to learn how to read tally charts in lesson 10.5. Practice making some bar graphs. Maybe you can ask your family what their favorite dinner is or what their favorite breakfast is. Maybe you can ask them what their favorite sport is or their favorite dessert and you can make your own bar graph. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.